Hello friends, welcome to the first video of PMFIS Environment video series. This video series is based on PMFIS Environment book which was released in August 2021. In the first video, we will be looking at the chapter 2 of PMFIS Environment. This chapter is titled as Environment, Habitat and Ecosystem. In case you are not aware of PMFIS Environment content, it is available both as PDF as well as hard copy. For the PDF, you can go to the website pmfis.com and for the hard copy, you can buy it from Amazon. To get the PDF, go to the website pmfis.com. The second product in the catalog is Environment GS Notes, which is nothing but PMFIS Environment 2021-2022. Add to the cart, proceed to checkout. In the checkout, after entering all the billing details, Click on pay and download. Once the payment is completed, go to downloads, environment and from the environment downloads page, you can download the static files of environment nodes as well as the current affairs. In case you want the content in the hard copy format, click on this link and on Amazon, you can purchase the book. It would not take more than two to three days for the book to reach you because we have distributed the book across 10 to 15 Amazon fulfillment centers. In the metros, it would not take you more than a day. Let's get into the main content of the book. The first chapter of the book deals with the previous prelims questions asked from the environment section. These questions help you understand the nature of questions that UPSC focuses on and what the current trend is. In the video, we'll be discussing the important concept of environment, habitat and ecosystem. We'll see what the differences between these terms and we'll also look at the components of the ecosystem. We'll study what is the limiting factor and we'll also answer certain questions from the components of the ecosystem. Throughout this video, we will encounter terms biotic and abiotic components. Biotic components are synonymous to living components. They also include derivatives of living components like dead organic matter before decomposition. Any organic matter before it undergoes decomposition can be considered as biotic components. After the process of decomposition, the biotic components are divided or broken down into molecules like oxygen, compounds like water and individual elements like carbon, nitrogen, etc. All these are non-living components. They are also called as abiotic components. Abiotic components are further divided into organic substances which contain carbon-hydrogen bond and the inorganic substances which do not have a carbon-hydrogen bond. And we have physical factors like air, water, temperature, atmospheric pressure, etc. which are also included under abiotic components. Coming to the biotic components, we have producers which are also called as autotrophs, consumers which cannot prepare their own food, they are also called as heterotrophs and we have decomposers which are also known as detrivores. Let us look at a question based on biotic and abiotic components. Which of the following are abiotic components? Lignite, dead matter, peat, decomposers and soil. The easiest of the option is decomposers. We know that decomposers are also called as detrivores and detrivores are biotic components. So this option should not be there in the answer. We can eliminate point B. And the next easiest option is soil. Soil in its purest form is an abiotic component and hence the answer should have option 5. Hence the answer is between A and D. To conclude between A and D, we need to know whether peat is biotic or abiotic. We have explained what is peat in geography. Peat is a semi-decomposed organic matter which is left over in the earth's surface because of incomplete decomposition. Few millions of years ago, in the swamps, there used to be small plants and shrubs. When these plants and shrubs died, they settled at the bottom of the swamp and they started decomposing, which gave rise to semi-decomposed organic matter. In the process, the semi-decomposed organic matter got covered by soil layers, layer after layer, cutting the peat layer of essential components like oxygen and other conditions which are required for decomposition. As a result, the peat remained in the semi-decomposed state and after a point of time, due to the pressure from the successive layers above, the peat got metamorphosed into lignite. Lignite is the lowest quality coal which has about 20 to 30 percent carbon content. And the lignite after a certain point, under the right conditions of temperature and pressure, metamorphosed into bituminous coal and the bituminous coal metamorphosed into anthracite coal. 
Here, the peat is a semi-decomposed organic matter, whereas lignite is a abiotic matter because in lignite there is no longer any biological decomposition. As a result, we can conclude that lignite is abiotic, whereas peat is biotic. And the answer for this question, that is, which of the following are abiotic components, we should not have 0.3 in the answer. So we can eliminate option A, and the right answer would be option D. Let us now look at the core aspects of the chapter. What is environment, ecosystem and habitat? In the previous slides, we have understood what abiotic and biotic factors are. Here to understand the definitions of environment, ecosystem and habitat, we need to know the interactions that take place between various of these components. Let us understand the interaction between these components with an example of a tree ecosystem. In the tree ecosystem, there are various biotic and abiotic factors. Water is an example for a abiotic factor. The soil is an example for an abiotic factor. Likewise, there are various biotic factors in this ecosystem. The primary producer, the tree, is a biotic factor. And the microorganisms which decompose the fox's dead body are also biotic factors. So environment is a physical component in which various kinds of interactions take place. The interactions might be between two biotic components or two abiotic components or between a biotic and a abiotic component. Here the tree ecosystem is also an environment because we have interactions between a biotic and a abiotic component. Here the light and the tree are the ones which are involved in the biotic and abiotic interaction. We have other kinds of interaction where the interaction is between soil and water. This interaction is between two abiotic components and the interaction between soil and the tree where the tree takes up nutrients from the soil. This is an interaction between abiotic and biotic factor. The squirrel consumes the food from the tree. This is an example for biotic-biotic interaction. And the fox consumes squirrel. This is also an example for an interaction between two biotic factors. Environment is a physical component in which there are various interactions between biotic components, abiotic components or between a biotic and abiotic component. The ecosystem is very similar to environment but in the ecosystem the biotic components play the major role. Here the interaction is between a biotic and biotic component, a biotic and a abiotic component. Habitat is a small part of the ecosystem which is the preferred environment for an organism. For example, for human beings, a house is the preferred habitat. Whereas for a bird, a tree is a preferred habitat. For a squirrel, the branches of the tree is a preferred habitat. Coming to the differences of environment, ecosystem and habitat, from the definition itself, we can conclude that environment can be anything. It can be as huge as the earth's surface or it can be as minute as a cell environment. In an environment, they can be life or they may not be life. Here the important factor is the interactions between these components and life is not the most determining factor for an environment. In the ecosystem, as we have seen, life forms the basis. It is at the core and heart of the ecosystem and a habitat. Without life, we cannot consider an environment as habitat or an ecosystem. Let us now understand with a simple example of a village and a house, how environment, ecosystem and habitat are different. In this entire village environment, we can see various ecosystems. For example, the neighborhood of human beings is one example of an ecosystem and we have certain small forests. Here we can consider the small forest as an ecosystem. In the forest, the individual tree makes up a habitat and there could be multiple trees and each tree is a habitat. And again, in the tree, there are micro habitats. For example, in the branches, there would be certain kind of insects and birds would be living there and that would be a micro habitat and certain other birds like woodpeckers would be living in the stem. So the stem of the tree would be a micro habitat for the woodpecker. Likewise, we have in the house, humans would be living in the house. For the humans, it is the preferred habitat choice. Along with the humans, there would be some birds which have nested in the vents and the roof of the house. Along with that, we would be having some ants, uh, some microorganisms, rodents, etc. which are living in the same house. So we can see that a habitat can be shared between two or more species and an habitat could have micro habitats within itself. And the ecosystem is the one multiple habitats. For example, we have a tree habitat, we have a human habitat and entire setup can be considered as one ecosystem. And there could be many such ecosystems in a village. So all this would mean that in a major environment, there could be multiple ecosystems and in a ecosystem, there could be multiple habitats. 
Let us understand the other differences between environment, ecosystem and habitat. An environment and an ecosystem can be preference of many species. In the sense, there could be variety of species. Whereas in a habitat, the species are very limited in number and a habitat is always a preference of one species. For example, for humans, we might be living in various parts of the earth, but still our preferred habitat is always a house. Likewise, for a bird, it might be having a nest in the house or somewhere on the tree, but the preferred habitat for the bird is a nest. Environment and ecosystem govern the properties of a habitat and not vice versa. Because whatever major aspects are happening in the ecosystem or the environment, they are going to dictate the terms of the habitat. For example, if there is a drought within the entire ecosystem, then that would indirectly affect the tree habitat. So we can say that the changes that are happening within the ecosystem govern the physical condition or properties of a habitat. An environment or a habitat can be of any size. The entire earth can be considered as an environment. Even the mass can be con considered as an environment because even though mass doesn't have life in it, but still there are various interactions between abiotic components. On the other hand, ecosystems are confined to earth because life is an essential component of an ecosystem. The world's ocean is the largest ecosystem and the entire earth can be considered as one single environment. Coming to the habitat, we have seen that a habitat is an individual component of an ecosystem. For example, within the largest ecosystem, that is the ocean, there are various individual habitats. For example, Pacific Ocean can be considered as a single habitat. Likewise, there could be photic habitat, aphotic habitat. Let us now answer a few questions from this section. Which of the following is the best description of the term ecosystem? An ecosystem has two kinds of interactions, the interaction between two biotic components and an interaction between a biotic and abiotic component. So an ecosystem must have a biotic component and without abiotic components, biotic components cannot survive. As a result, both biotic and abiotic components are essential for an ecosystem. The community of organisms interacting with one another, it is called as ecological community. In an eco ecological community, the interaction is between two biotic components. So this doesn't fit into the definition of ecosystem. That part of the earth which is inhabited by living organisms. This is called as biosphere. In the next chapter, we'll see in detail what it means by biosphere. The community of organisms together with the environment in which they live. Here we are considering both biotic and abiotic factors and hence we can call this as an ecosystem. So the answer is C. The flora and fauna of a geographic area. This is called as biodiversity. Let us look at the second question. Which of the following best describes the difference between habitat and environment? We know that in environment, there are interactions between biotic components, abiotic components and interaction between biotic and abiotic components. A habitat is a subset of an ecosystem which is the preference of one particular species. Let us look at the options. An environment always has life in it, whereas a habitat does not necessarily have life in it. We know that life is must in a habitat. As a result, this option is wrong and an environment may or may not have life in it. A habitat is a preference of many species, whereas an environment is a preference of only one species. We have also seen that a habitat is always a preference of one species, not many species. So this option is wrong and the environment is always a preference of many species, not just one species. So this option is also wrong. Coming to the third point, all habitats are environments, but not all environments are habitats. We have seen that life is must in a habitat and in an environment, there might be life or they may not be life. As a result, we can conclude that all habitats are environments but all environments are not habitats. Let us understand this with the help of an example. There is a particular geographic feature in Ethiopia. It is called as Dalal Geothermal Field. The significance of this particular geographic feature is that it doesn't have any life form in it. This is one such places on the earth because of its toxic environment. It doesn't support even the minutest of the microorganisms. Here, the acidic waters which are at high temperatures doesn't provide conducive environment for life. So here we can say that this is an environment which doesn't have life in it. So all habitats are environments, whereas all environments are not habitats because here the geo, the large geothermal field is a environment, but it is not a habitat because it doesn't have life in it. So the option C is correct. 
habitats govern the properties of an environment again this option is wrong because the environment and the ecosystem govern the properties of a habitat coming to the next question consider the following statements the functional unit of nature is the ecosystem yes it's true ecosystem is the ecosystem is called the functional unit of nature just like cell is the functional unit of an organism we know that in the cell there are various life processes that are taking place and these life processes are essential for the organism to survive likewise for the environment of the earth to survive we need the life processes that are taking place in the ecosystem hence the ecosystem is considered as the functional unit of nature or biosphere and the habitat is the subset of the ecosystem we have seen seen in the previous slides that an ecosystem has multiple habitats as a result we can conclude that a habitat is a subset of the ecosystem no single species is common between two dif different habitats let us take an example let us consider an example of a fox a fox can be found in a savanna habitat it can also be found in a desert habitat as a result we can conclude that this option is wrong because a single species might be common between various habitats no habitat is common for two different species this again says that two different species cannot exist in one single habitat this option is also wrong because we have seen that a tree habitat might support various kind of species in some cases a habitat might also be an ecosystem yes it's true because here the tree habitat is also an example for tree ecosystem hence we can say this option is correct hence the answer is c coming to the next question consider the following statements regarding ecosystem non living components of the environment are not a part of the ecosystem we have seen that an ecosystem has both biotic and abiotic components but the biotic components are the most important factor in an ecosystem hence this option is wrong ecosystem is the community of organisms together with the environment in which they live yes this statement is correct ecosystem is the structural and functional unit of the biosphere yes this point is also true sometimes instead of biosphere it could be mentioned as nature also so the answer is d let us now look at the various components of an ecosystem we have seen that an ecosystem has both biotic and abiotic components we have also understood that the biotic components are synonymous to living beings whereas abiotic components are synonymous to non living beings let us answer a few questions based on components of an ecosystem which of the following are autotrophs we know that autotrophs are nothing but the primary producers which can produce their own food consider the options all plankton the plankton are microscopic aquatic organisms phytoplankton are the primary producers in the aquatic environment they are autotrophs whereas zooplankton are primary consumers they are heterotrophs as a result not all plankton are autotrophs mushrooms survive on dead and decaying matter they are called as saprotrophs they are not autotrophs diatoms and cyanobacteria are example for phytoplankton we have seen that phytoplankton are the primary producers in the ocean or the aquatic environment hence they are autotrophs they might include diatoms cyanobacteria and dingoflagellates as a result the answer for this question is 3 and 4 b coming to the next question which of the following organisms are known as saprotrophs we know that saprotrophs are the ones which feed on dead and decaying matter to obtain their nutrition the examples include all the detritivores and other species fungi species like mushrooms the answer for this question is c coming to the other options organisms that survive on blood of other other organisms like mosquitoes and leeches the process is called as emetophagy organisms that live on other organisms as body they are called as parasites organisms that eat organisms of the same species they are called as cannibals the answer is c coming to the next question which of the following is are categorized as autotrophs we have seen that autotrophs are the ones which can prepare their own food phototrophs chemotrophs saprophytes and phagotrophs phototrophs are the ones like plants which use photosynthesis to prepare their own food chemotrophs are the ones which rely on chemicals in the medium to obtain their food saprophytes are the ones which rely on dead and decaying matter and phagotrophs are another example for heterotrophs so the answer for this question is 1 and 2 only we have seen that in an ecosystem there are both biotic as well as abiotic components and these components are essential for the survival of various organisms in certain cases 
A single abiotic component might become detrimental to the survival of an organism. Such an abiotic component is called as limiting factor. Let us understand this with a few examples. If a tropical rainforest is removed, it does not regenerate quickly as compared to the tropical deciduous forest. This is because the soil of the rainforest is deficient in nutrients. Propagules of the trees in the rainforest have poor viability. The rainforest species are slow growing. Exotic species invade the fertile soil of rainforest. Of all the options, the easiest of the option is C. We can simply eliminate option C because the rainforest species are always fast growing because there is huge density of trees. As a result, the competition for sunlight and nutrients is quite extraordinary. As a result, the species always try to grow as quickly as possible. Coming to the other option, Propagules of the trees in a rainforest have poor viability. Propagules are the detached parts of a plant which are helpful in reproduction. They could include buds, spores, etc. And the propagules don't have any impact on the regeneration of a rainforest. So this option can be eliminated. Coming to the fertility of the soil, we assume that since there is so much vegetation in a rainforest, the soil of the rainforest should be very rich in nutrients. But this is not the case. There are two factors which actually deprive the soil of their nutrients. One is rain. The other factor is the competition between the species. We know that in the rainforest, due to immense competition, the species want to grow as quickly as possible. As a result, they end up consuming all the nutrients that are available in the top layer of the soil. And also, whenever there is biomass falling on the soil, and this biomass quickly decomposes because of temperature and moisture, and once there is rain, decomposed matter lying on the ground is quickly washed away by the rainwater. As a result, the top layer of the rainforest is always devoid of nutrients. The option D is wrong because we have seen that the top layer of our rainforest is not fertile. So this option is wrong. Let us understand the term limiting factor with yet another question. Coral reefs are generally absent on the western coast of the continents. The reasoning for this is warm ocean currents act as the limiting factor. Let us check whether the statement true is correct or wrong. We know that the western margins of the continents are dominated by cold currents. Here we have on the western side of the South American continent, we have Peruvian current, which is a cold current. Likewise, on the western side of the African continent, we have Bengula current. And on the western side of Europe, we have Canaries. And here we have the Alaska current. So all these currents are cold currents. And if you look at the distribution of corals in this map, we can see that the coral reefs are concentrated on the eastern margins of the continent. This is because here, the waters are dominated by warm waters. As a result, the climate is conducive in, within the tropics for the coral reefs to grow on the eastern side of the continents. Assertion is true, but the reasoning is wrong. So the answer is A is true, but R is false. Here it should be cold currents, not warm currents. Coming to the next question, mangroves are generally confined to the tropics and the subtropics. The salt filtration system in the mangroves is highly energy intensive. Now let us understand whether the first statement is true or not. The mangroves are generally confined to the tropics and the subtropics. It is true. This is because the mangroves live in a harsh intertidal zone where the water is very salty. To survive in certain environment, there are complex systems within the mangroves. For example, a salt filtration system, as you can see within this leaf. This system is highly energy intensive and only the tropics have adequate amount of sunshine as we move away from the equator, the required for various life processes also decreases. The answer for this is both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. A very similar question. Mangroves are generally confined to the tropics. The sun's insulation reduces with increase in distance from the equator. As we have seen in the previous example, both the points are true. As we move away from the equator, the sun's insulation decreases. As a result, the amount of energy required for the mangroves to carry out their complex salt filtration system also decreases and hence mangroves cannot survive beyond tropics. So the answer is again A. Both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. Coming to the next question, high temperature and aridity promote root growth in a plant. The reasoning for this is high temperature and aridity leads to desiccation in a plant. The loss of water in the form of evapotranspiration and other similar factors. Due to the aridity and high temperature, the roots penetrate deep into the soil in search of water and nutrients. Hence, both statements are true and the answer is A. In the mountainous ecosystem, 
which of the following act as limiting factors in the mountainous ecosystem with height the fertility of the soil decreases the soil structure changes so option 1 and 2 are correct what about change in oxygen level with altitude if you carefully look at the question it doesn't mention any vegetation it just says in the mountainous ecosystem which of the following act as limiting factors we don't find human settlements as we move from south to north of a mountain this is because the oxygen level decreases with height and humans cannot survive in low oxygen level environments so here lack of oxygen or low levels of oxygen is also a detrimental factors the answer is all which of the following best describes the term die back it refers to progressive dying usually backwards from the tip of any portion of a plant the answer for this question is a dieback is a very important adaptive mechanism for the plants in arid environments where to counter the lack of water the shoot dies from the tip and the root remains alive in the ground this happens during the arid season and when there is sufficient amount of water in the future the root gives rise to the shoot so dieback is an important adaptive mechanism where the lack of water acts as a limiting factor that's it from chapter 2 of pmfis environment In the next video we will be dealing with chapter 3 ecology principles and organizations for all the details on the video course and for free environment current affairs pdfs follow our telegram channel pmfis_channel for all those who have purchased our environment book and been looking for the current affairs of pmfis you can visit our telegram channel pmfis_channel and in the files section you can see the recently uploaded current affairs pdfs of pmfis environment so from here you can download the pdfs for free thank you for staying this long see you in the next video